वेलकम बैक टू दिस लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन सोशल इश्यूज बाई टू द पॉइंट इन दिस वीडियो विल बी कंटिन्यूइंग फ्रॉम वेयर वी लेफ्ट इन द फर्स्ट वीडियो एंड दिस इज द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ दिस सीरीज ऑन जेंडर इक्वालिटी दिस वीडियो बिगिन विद द एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ द स्टेटस ऑफ वेमेन इन इंडिया सो वेन वी टॉक अबाउट द स्टेटस वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट देयर पोजिशन इन ट्रीटमेंट and with respect to access to various resources for their fulfillment of potential what was the historical development of this position was it constant or did it change across time periods let us examine so in the ancient period we have seen that even before the ancient period in the prehistoric times uh, men had a upper hand but if you take the context in the case of india we worship women as adi parashakti so in the ancient times they enjoyed a equal status with men however as time period progressed there were some very superstitious practices which popped into our culture and we have seen certain laws with respect to the status of women in our medieval period so this is the times when we experienced practices like sati where a woman is expected to be burnt alive along with the person's expired husband but that practice has eventually been done away with in modern india so what is the modern india like in modern india women have held high offices like we have had uh, the president pratibha patil ji we have had the prime minister indira gandhi ji also speaker of lok sabha and the leader of opposition all these positions were occupied by women despite having such widespread success even today in our society we see a lot of atrocities being committed against women in this video we'll be trying to understand the reason for such atrocities at the outset we have to understand that these atrocities are not because of lack of any protections that are not being given by the constitution in fact constitution explicitly lays down certain provisions to ensure the dignity of women for example article 14 says that men and women should be treated equally and in article 15 clause 1 there is no discrimination by the state based on race religion caste and most importantly in this context sex and place of birth so we have seen that sex is a biological construct not a social construct so just because some person is a female you cannot discriminate against that person just on that ground of course there is equality of opportunity as per article 16 equal pay for equal work and there is also uh, a positive affirmation action from the state in favor of women and children because they are vulnerable and this is according to article 15 clause 3 despite having such uh, provisions women in india face many atrocities for example the rape cases that we see on a everyday basis acid attacks dowry killings and forced prostitution of young girls all this are a existential reality of indian society today we have discussed how our indian society is patriarchal in nature where uh even though women get respect as mothers and sisters the independence aspect as well as the safety aspect is still requiring a lot of work so they face violence from womb to tomb as amartya sen has famously said from the time they are born through female infanticide practices where females are considered to be inferior sex and they don't uh, want female kids this is a reality until recently or even continuing in the present times in certain states so they have been subjected to violence and harassment till their entire life cycle continued that is the womb to tomb approach now the first factor that we have to consider talking from the uh, perspective of indian society the reason why that culture has propagated is because of the construct of institution called the joint family system Now, what is a joint family system? The family in India does not consist only of a husband, wife, children. In traditional Indian society, 
many such nuclear families live together in order to attain economies of scale basically indian society is agrarian driven that is agriculture is the main source of income historically in order to ensure that the agriculture division of labor is done effectively joint family system thrive for centuries together in our country but it is only until uh, independence movement and what followed more so from 1991 after economic reforms where people started witnessing more and more opportunities this institution of joint family system started to wither away so what are the components or what are the facets of this indian family system first one there is an authoritarian structure power mostly rests with a patriarch that is a male and therefore the individual interests are always less important collective decisions are taken family interests are taken uh, in the first hand rather than women's individual interests there is a lot of hierarchy depending on age elders decision power was much larger than the younger ones so conjugal relations that is the relation between a man and his uh, wife is considered to be somehow inferior to the uh, relationship that the males have with their kids so this is filial relations there is a couple of principles that you have to know one is that of joint responsibility and the other one is principle of seniority this is nothing but the reiteration of the second point and the first point wherein individual interests are always less important whenever a decision is taken it is the responsibility of the patriarch to consider all the collective interests of the family and the principle of seniority is that the eldest one is given more weightage in decision making than the younger ones so obviously what is the impact there is less decision making power women will not have autonomy because this is not specific just to one family or one caste irrespective of the economic status the caste in which that lady is in or the household location whether they are in urban areas or uh, rural areas this was the traditional setup of course there were certain rural variations for example we have discussed in the first class that northeast in this northeast region matriarchal families exist even today some tribal societies also follow this matriarchal society but decision making resting with women is almost negligible in the traditional sense in india so not all women in the family have the same level of autonomy like we have to understand that senior women have greater weightage in their decision rather than the younger ones so and again if we take a look at the caste as a reality or a social construct women from upper caste groups are generally wealthy in traditional sense so they were not allowed to work it is actually the lower caste because they don't have any other option they were sent out to work so almost the participation in the labor market by females is very negligible another manifestation or uh, effect that you can see with respect to the gender issue is the aspect of domestic violence according to the minister of women and child development ministry recently a report came out saying that 70% of the women in india are facing domestic violence and this is despite having a legal protection wherein there is a blanket provision uh, women are given advantage when a woman comes up and says that uh, she is being abused domestically and imposes a case upon the male's family or himself the family is automatically deemed to be guilty unless proven otherwise despite having such a powerful legislation there are still uh, under reporting of cases because of the fear of course the other side is that this act has been criticized because it was misused by certain women sometimes but that is also one aspect or one dimension of the concept of gender equality when we are talking about gender equality in the indian context always remember that since such magnitude of women are facing the issue we are generally talking about women 
but if you have to have a holistic sense in the true sense of the meaning gender equality you also have to talk about males you also have to talk about transgenders also please don't forget this point so what are these different forms of domestic violence one you have the physical abuse or physical violence where females are generally attacked they are hit they are uh, probably uh, restrained from moving out sometimes they are uh, burnt there is probable uh, abuse of alcohol or forcing women to use alcohol or drugs there is a possible assault with a weapon physical violence may or may not result in an injury that requires medical attention but it does not mean that a woman can accuse of physical domestic violence only when she is injured this violence i repeat may or may not result in an injury but if the woman complains that case is to be taken up on a priority similarly sexual violence this involves individuals bodily integrity being assaulted that means there can be a forced sexual contact there can be rape there can be uh, prostitution as well or any unwelcome sexual behavior or sexual harassment so all this come under sexual domestic violence the next one is the psychological aspect sometimes there can be intimidation threat of harm or there can be examples uh, where trying to instill fear in an intimate partner through threatening behavior or damaging the property or sometimes using uh, fear and horror as a agent to get what they want there is a constant supervision or control with an objective to create a fear amongst the minds of females it involves misuse of spiritual or religious practices also so all this control is meant to use fear as a tool to ad- advance their objectives so that is the psychological angle now what is the difference between psychological and emotional emotional generally means that putting down a person's self worth like constant criticism narcissistic tendencies embarrassing in front of everyone humiliating or treating like a servant all this constitute emotional aspect and the final one which is the most important one is economic abuse we have to understand that women do not get education properly in indian society in the traditional sense things are changing right now but in the traditional sense this has been a reality for a significant chunk of the population right through our uh, independence years and post independent years also as a result what happens is women are predominantly dependent economically on her husband what happens if that husband ditches this person they don't have an education they don't have a skill how are they going to uh, gain access to economic resources because state can't feed every single person so that is also one sort of an abuse and one sort of an uh, for one form of a domestic violence so what are the effects of this domestic violence you have to understand that women is central for a family whenever there are incidents of domestic violence it not only impacts the family the women of course gets impacted but it impacts the family and it also impacts the children as well what can be the impact on women it can be death or injury disability trauma homelessness substance abuse in depression physical health injuries like getting attacked some people get violent with their wives and uh, cause physical harm as well which are sometimes irreversible what is the impact on family families literally break down sometimes it even leads to traumatizing experiences for children because it involves police child protection agencies and they are scarred for their life this is a vicious cycle and it has been a reality that needs to be addressed both on a personal and social level therefore we also have to talk about 
such domestic violence cases impacting the society at large because you are creating by ignoring the developmental needs of kids involved in this domestic cases the impact that they can have on community as a whole so these kids grow up to be bullies they become abusers they get into drug peddling their mental health takes a hit they get involved in substance abuse and uh, illegal trades so they become basically anti social elements because they don't get the right kind of love and affection that they deserve at the right age so what are the causes of this domestic violence firstly money dowry demands this has been one of the biggest reason for domestic violence second one there are very limited economic opportunities for women so men kind of tend to take them for granted and continuously abuse them third one despite having such high incidence of uh, cases like the minister said that there are 70% of the cases of domestic violence in our country she even went on to say that there is a silent pandemic in the lockdown last year what is the silent pandemic silent pandemic is the increasing number of domestic violence cases in the lockdown so she came up with the statistic on a basis of a survey that the ministry conducted and even if there are certain women who are willing to take the risk of going against their family and reporting in uh, certain institutions say police sometimes there can be lack of sensitization on the part of police they don't respond properly they try to take it off into uh, informal channels settle the issue with the family what happens is after such incidents there are heightened chances of the women being harassed or women being attacked again so this is a vicious cycle that needs to be broken down so that is the first part of this uh, gender status in india uh, the first part of the explainer will be continuing with other factors which impact the uh, status of gender in our country in the next part of the video thank you